Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. God is real. How many of you know he's real? Yes, he is. Some will ask the question, how do you know he lives? He lives within me. Amen. We praise God this morning for the great things that he has done. And still yet the greater things he still yet will do. Amen. It is known to us as God has placed us in our perspective places. And in doing so, we should understand this moment that there is none like him. None. Amen. We should understand this morning that he would do what he said he's going to do. Amen. Amen. And I'm so honored and pleased to bring able to bring you a word this morning to encourage your heart, to uplift you, and to be a beacon of light for you to find your way home. Amen. We looked last night at the game. Amen. Might have been a little disappointed with the end results. But nevertheless, we saw it. Amen. And as I looked and I was counting all the mats in the multitude. Are you listening to me? Amen. And yet we are afraid to go and come and give God praise. Amen. 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 There's a message in there. Amen. And I think at this particular time and point in our lives, we rather stay at home than give God praise. Amen. I'm a, no, I know for a fact what's going to happen is going to happen. I know that. Because God has the world in the palm of his hand. But I also know that I'm supposed to be cautious about what I do. But I cannot tell you that I'm cautious in what I do if I do not set the example of what's been said. Amen. And just because the government said it's safe, no me, I'm going to take my mask off. All right. Amen. Amen. I, I'm asking you a question this morning. Who the boss of you? Amen. Amen. Who the boss of you? You or somebody else? And as we looked at that, I looked at the things that God has showed uniquely this week. How many of you here have seen God work in your lives today, this week? Yeah. How many of you had a personal experience with God this week? Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about last year, but I'm talking about have you had an experience with him this week? Amen. Amen. And as I begin to look at it, as God begins to reveal it to me, I want to take you to the book of Daniel, the sixth chapter. Daniel, the sixth chapter, beginning with verse number one. Daniel, the sixth chapter. Beginning with verse number one. And the word says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 prince, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the prince might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and priests, prince, because of an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and prince sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no occasion, no fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his, law, of his God. 
Then these pricks, prophets and pricks assembled together to the king and said unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the prophets of the kingdom and governors, prince, counselors, captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alter not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. And when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, his windows being open in his chambers toward Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. This morning, be faithful. Amen. Amen. Be faithful. Amen. High five today and tell us to be faithful. Being faithful means that you have to be committed. Being committed will lead to your faithfulness. You have to be faithful whether you feel like it or not. You have to be faithful regardless of what others do. You may not feel like you want to feel sometimes. But you need to be faithful. Yes. You may not have the same caliber somebody else has, but you need to be faithful. Faithful simply meaning that you gonna do it because it's right. Amen. Look at somebody say, do it because it's right. <laughs> faithful. When you are faithful, others will see your faithfulness. The Bible clearly tells us that he who is faithful over the love, come on somebody. If you're faithful over the love, in other words, if you know how to maintain the little bit, then that means you're going to be faithful over the much. Amen. Amen. You can't be faithful over the much if you haven't been faithful over the love. Amen. Amen. The first person that you have to look to in order to be faithful is your inner self. How many of us said these words? I don't feel like going to church today. But if you are a child of God, something on the inside of you told you it's not because you wanted to, but because it was right. Amen. Many times, we have lost opportunities because we're not faithful. Mm -hmm. What if the Lord should come today? Mm -hmm. Will he catch your work mm -hmm. or none? Mm -hmm. Preaching and talking to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. Faithful simply means that you have a job that you've been assigned to. Mm -hmm. Faithful just means that you have a task that has been given. Faithful just means that you are more than a church member. A church member is a person who has a name on the roster. <laughs> Hello, somebody. What I love about this is I like to mess with folks. Because I ask them simply these words, what have you done for the Lord lately? Folks, about that's not like Daddy Jackson. <laughs> but that's a question. Amen. Anyone can go to church. But is the church in you? Amen. Is the church in you? What did you come to church for? Did you come because someone made you? Did someone obligated you? You should come to the Lord and enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. I'm glad that you did it in the Lord. In other words, he didn't 
have to do it, but he did. Amen. I am going to give him praise this morning because of all the good things he done for me. Amen. Point number one. Let your integrity speak for you and not against you. Let your integrity speak for you and not against you. If you are faithful, you don't care whether the boss is there or not. Amen. Come on, somebody. I'm here to do the job or the assignment that's been assigned to me, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. Amen. Many times we've had people in the Bible were in captivity. Joseph was one. Being a slave did not stop him from praising God. Amen. The more Joseph was entrapped, the more trouble Joseph got into, God was right there to deliver him. Mm -hmm. And if you are faithful like Joseph was faithful, in the end he became second to the emperor over everything. Mm -hmm. Bob's not going to put you in charge of something when you're not taking care of what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we got too many pokers in the fire. Somebody told me that's multi-tax. I call it multi-messing up. Because everybody cannot multi-tax. Hello, somebody. Sometimes you got to concentrate on just one thing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in doing so, you have to be faithful. Number three, number two will be faithful. Number three, be trustworthy. Be trustworthy. Be trustworthy. In being trustworthy, that means you have integrity. Well or not, the boss there or not there, he trusted you would do your part. The Lord didn't tell you to feed everybody in faith in. Close everybody in bed here. But he said, if you are faithful in doing what you do, give a little bit of what you have. Then as often as you have done this to the least of them, you've done it unto me. Amen. Trustworthy. Meaning you're in charge of what the Lord has given you. How many good students do I have this morning? Amen. See, people have not understood this parable any clearer. Everything that I have belongs to God. Amen. Amen. All that I have is because God has given it to me. Amen. To be trustworthy means that in order for me to get another blessing, because somebody said I want a blessing. I, I got to get rid of the stuff in my hands. How many had families with me when you were growing up? Your parents fed the whole neighborhood. Amen. Amen. Didn't have much. But everybody was full and content. Amen. Knowing how to be trustworthy. Number four, be honest. Be honest. There's nothing worse than a fear. Hello, somebody. Amen. Would a man rob God? <laughs> Where have you robbed me? He's out of the number. Stewardship, things that I gave you. Be honest. When you're honest, you open frame. Your life should be transparent. You can see. People want to pin you. People want to put all on you. But when you're honest, they can find no fault with you. Amen. I'm saying this because all this is tied up in what I'm talking about with Daniel. You got to be honest. When you're honest, how many of you here like the truth to be told to you? Amen. I'm talking about the honest truth. Amen. Amen. Oh, you can't tell everybody the truth. <laughs> how many times you've had people who would tell you the half truth? Instead of being honest, they tell you what they want to tell you. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
Being honest means that you're honest. People know of your honesty. They can trust you with what they have. And I have. Five. Be loyal. Be loyal. Marriages break up because of the lack of warranty. All the ones that I have mentioned, honesty, sincerity, loyalty. I tell the first lady, when I move, you move. <laughs> we done got that thing down there. <coughs> when I move, you move. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all have been in the hole in the walls before <laughs> we turned to the Lord, but we came back to the Lord. A lot of times you get in the hole in the wall, something happens. You don't need nobody to question you. You need to move. We get we get outside, we get disgusted. <laughs> Amen. Be loyal. Know what I can trust on you. When I when you leave, I had to go to work, I ain't gotta worry about somebody else taking you away from me. Amen. All right. Come on, somebody. Be a lawyer. Be a lawyer. Amen. One of the things that I told my sons, and I was told myself, God didn't stop making good looking women when he gave you your wife. He made a whole lot of good looking women. Oh, y'all got quiet in the name. That's why you don't take care of your husband. Amen. Amen. Y'all be quiet all you want to. You better treat him like a king if you want to be treated like a queen. Are you listening to me? Be loyal. Ain't that someone say clean up for me? No, no, no. Don't act like y'all holding that. <laughs> Amen. You didn't tell me about Pastor. She didn't want it. Right. Okay. Lawyer. Be lawyer. Amen. What is the definition of faith? Faith simply means to be steadfast in affection and alliance. It means you'll be loyal. How many of you are loyal to the Lord? Amen. Amen. I'm not just talking about on Sunday. Amen. 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 Being loyal to the Lord. In other words, when he looked down and see you tomorrow, he will have to turn his face. It means to be firm in our pleasures, the promises, and observance of duty, conscientious. What is the meaning of eternity? <coughs> Being honest and having strong moral principles, more uprightness. You are trustworthy. Can the Lord trust you with what he gave you? Can the Lord trust you with what he gave you? Are you being a good steward of what the Lord gave you? Or did you take the gift God gave me and went and dug a hole and covered up. Are you using your church, your gift in the church? Or is your gift buried in a hole? Somebody will move through. Daniel has grown older now. And he has seen many things. Yet, in his old age, he was able to conduct business and remain faithful to his religion. Daniel was not the type of person that had a religion that when time got poor or time was not right, that he laid it down. How many of you know friends lay down their religion? How many of you hear? Of you would get up laid down your religion. Amen. I had to straighten him out. Amen. I didn't know who I was. And then you pick it back up. I, it amazed me how people cuss and shout, holler at one another, and then holler, bless the Lord. <laughs> what God are you praying to? We need to know and remain faithful to God. The presence and prince 
have heard Darius declare to Daniel what they want. Because Daniel was honest, loyal, upright, the king had decided that he was more honorable than any of his own people. And he wanted to put Daniel in charge of everybody. See, it does not matter your condition sometimes or situation that you need. If you are faithful and loyal and you keep the principle, God will move you to the next level. Amen. Even your enemies will have to respect you. Mm -hmm. Daniel is not a citizen of that city. He is a slave, but because of his duty, his responsibility, his loyalty, someone said, I can use this man. Amen. The men in the other prince sought how to get even with Daniel. Talk about your co-workers now. Hear yeah, now. The same ones that you work with. And all of a sudden now, the boss has an eye on you to move you. And yet, instead of praising you, they look for ways to tear you down. But they didn't like Daniel no way. Amen. Amen. But Daniel knew how to stay faithful. He, Daniel knew where his blessings came from. And then these men got together and said, we can get with the king. And we will get a constitution here that says that no one would ask of anything from no God or any man for 30 days. And we'll get the king to sign it. Because we can't trap Daniel. No other way. In other words, Daniel will praise God whether we like it or not. We know his characteristics. We know his way. Can someone say about you this morning that that's a praying child right now? Can someone say that you are a prayer warrior, that they would love for you to be in the presence of their presence? They took counsel, took it to the king. The king read it, and because of his pride, they sent him up. They did not know that the prince and the council had an underlying message. And they didn't like the fact that Daniel was in charge. They found a looking for a way to bring him down. Some of you running with some people today that you need to get rid of. Amen. They don't mean you no good. Right. Are you listening to me? Amen. The first thing that you have to understand this morning. Amen. When we get together and praise one another, help one another, then there's no envy in any of us. Amen. But when we allow Satan to come in and tell you that you are better than someone else, that's when we got a problem. Amen. You got too many people, praise God, counting your money. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. They don't know that you have what you have because God blessed you. Amen. They don't know you have what you have because God brought you a long way. Amen. Amen. They don't remember the time that you had to call out to God when you had nothing. Amen. But because of your faithfulness, God elevated you. First of all, let's look at this thing. We're not faithful to God. We live in a time now when you can't talk about Jesus. Better not mention him in the workplace. Better not mention him in, in, in their social activities. We tell our children we can't, we can't pray in church, in school. And I remember whether we like it or not, in those latter days, every morning you went to school, you had to say allegiance to the prayer. <laughs> and you had to have the prayer. And then I'm talking about something somebody don't know nothing about. And we didn't know a lot of things when we were coming up, but because the church had laid hands on us, in other words, it dwelled in our heart, it taught us the fundamentals of what we were supposed to do. Amen. Sunday school, Bible study. We were embedded so that we would know the principles, the statutes of the Lord. Now families get together. At Thanksgiving and Christmas, nobody say a prayer. Nobody give God thanks. Even when we had just a little bit, you were not going to touch anything on that table. Amen. A 
continue with blessing. Amen. Amen. Prayer was made to God, but not to the true God. Jesus is not mentioned because you will offend somebody. Nowadays, we don't say the name Jesus. We say your God's name. But I'm here to tell you this morning. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whether you like it or not, that's your responsibility. But as for me and my house, I wish I had a witness this morning. I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. It carried me just a little bit. Even Jesus had to suffer persecution. They kept an eye on him and watched him and see what he's going to do. Pharisees was not sure how he was going to act. Even though they helped the law and were mandated of the law, they forgot the law. But they found out they were unable to track it. Can I get a witness? The Bible tells me even when they brought Jesus to Pilate. Y'all remember what I'm talking about. Even Pilate said in Luke 23 and 14, you have brought this man to me as one who misleads people. And indeed, having examined him in your presence, I find no fault in this man. Killing in the witness. I find no fault in this morning. And now, have you found fault with the Lord this morning? Haven't he been true to his word? Amen. 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 The Bible tells me that they went on and, and probably his Daniel. But Daniel found out what they had done. Amen. He didn't run away from the situation. The word said Daniel went on up into the upper room. All right. Made sure the windows was open. Yeah. Bowed down and began to pray to God. Can I get a witness? And yeah. now, regardless of the circumstance, yeah. I'm going to give God praise. Yeah. Regardless of the situation, yeah. I know where my help comes from. Yeah. The Bible tells me yeah. that they ran and grabbed Daniel. Yeah. They finally had something on Daniel. And they went back to the king and said, Oh, king, you remember the decree that you made? And the king loved Daniel. But the Bible tells me that even though he loved Daniel, he already signed the decree. And he couldn't go back on his word. Sometimes people in high places can't do nothing for you. But I'm so glad I got a God in a higher place. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Sometimes my friends can't help me. Sometimes they don't know the weight that's on my shoulder. I'm so glad I got a master. I'm so glad I got a king. I'm so glad that my God sits high and looks low. Wait a minute. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Bible said the king brought that in. Looked at him. Couldn't do anything for him. All right. All he could say was, throw Daniel. In the lion's den. Good God, I'm sorry. The Bible said when it threw Daniel in the lion's den, yeah. the king was upset. He went home. He wouldn't eat. He couldn't sleep. Early in the morning. Early that morning. He ran to the lion's den. Can I get a witness? He hollered out. To Daniel, the king said, the God you serve, the God you worship, Daniel was able to deliver you. Good God, I'm sorry. He was hoping that someone would say something. But Daniel was inside the lion's den. Can I tell you the lion's den? Well, in the late midnight hour, because of Daniel's faithfulness, God dispatched an angel from on high. The Bible tells me it was not said that Daniel knew the lion was in the den. He went over to the lion, put his head on it, and went on to sleep. You know, you're a witness. Sometimes when you're wrestling with something, you've done all you can do. you got to turn it over and let the Lord work it out. Anybody in here? You can walk the hall all night long. You can walk the wall all night long. But when you turn it over, 